All right, let's talk about functions now. So let me open up our default HTML page. There we go. And let me write functions. Let's save it as functions.php save. All right, so what exactly is a function? A function is a block of reusable code. All right, so let me, let me just demonstrate that instead of uh, explain it, explaining it. So let me add a for loop here. Let's say for i is equal to zero, i less than or equal to 10, i plus plus. So this is a generic for loop. Let's say echo, uh, let me echo i with a, a break like that. Okay. So let me try to run this in Firefox and as usual, make sure that I say local host here. And so we get an ordinary loop. But what if I want to repeat this loop over and over again? I will have to paste it uh, several times. And if I refresh this page, you see it repeats as desired. But let's say I have repeated this a hundred times throughout the page and I realized that this loop should actually go up to 20, for example. So I'd have to go through all these and change this to 20, which could be time consuming and so on. So instead of doing this, you could save time by creating a function instead. So this becomes a function. So to create a function, you just type function and then you type the function name that describes what you're trying to do. So in this case, we want to say count uh, count is actually a keyword, so you have to be careful not to use that one. Count to uh, 10, for example. Okay, so I have to put open and close brackets, uh, a curly bracket as well, opening and closing, and we have a function. So this is a function here now. So obviously, this is a simple example I've given because you can have thousands of lines of code in here in this one function, and it can save you a lot of time. So let me run this and see what happens. Nothing. Okay, nothing happens. Why? Because the function doesn't run just like this. It has to be called. So I have to call it by saying count to 10. Make sure I remember the open and closing brackets therein. Otherwise it won't work. So in this case, if I do that, it runs. So in this way, I can just repeat this several number of times and it will run like that. So as you can see, this is much cleaner than repeating all this every time. Imagine if there were a thousand lines, it would be a mess. This is much easier. Okay, so some things to note about functions is that if, for example, I have a variable inside here called a, and I say a is equal to 10, okay, then let me echo 10, uh, a here outside. So if I refresh this, what will happen is that an identified variable a, it doesn't know what a is, even though I declared it in a function here. Why? Because of scope. This a in here, whatever uh, variables you declare inside a function, they don't apply outside the function. They're just specifically for inside the function. So this a does not exist outside this function. So likewise, if I had an a here, which I said was equal to 20, for example, even though when I run the function, a is declared as equal to 10, it will not affect this a outside because this a only resides inside this function, this one outside. So this is a global variable. This one is a local variable because it only works inside the function. So let me test this out now and we get 20 out there, okay? Let me put uh, a, a, a tag here, down here, so we can notice whenever the function is done. So let me echo a horizontal rule, for example, so that we see a line, yes. So this line means the end of the function, of course, because this echoing is inside the function. All right, so this A maintains its value even after I run a function which has an a inside it because this a and this a are different. Now, if I want to use this a right here, I would have to declare it as a global. I would have to say global a. 
just like that. So I'm declaring this A as this exact A that's global outside of the function, okay? So meaning if I change this to 10, it changes the global variable. So let's see what happens. And you see it changes to 10 because inside the function, we actually change the global A to 10. So this is what happens. Now, let's imagine we want, uh, let me remove that. Let's imagine I want to return a value. I don't want to echo anything out uh, right here. I want the function to return a value to me. So let's uh, use arguments in this case. The way to do this, let's imagine I have a different kind of uh, function. Now this function is like this. Answer is equal to, let me put some variables, a plus b, oh sorry, plus c, like that. And then I want it to echo answer, like that. So let me remove this a as well for clarity. So what this function does is that it produces an answer from a, b, and c. Now these have to be declared, obviously. So a, let me say a, oh, sorry, a is equal to one. Uh, let's say b is equal to two, and c is equal to three, like that, okay? So let me refresh that and I get a six obviously, because one plus two plus three is six. Now, this function will repeat every time I do this, it will keep giving me, giving me a six, like so. But what if I want to change these values every time, but I want to add them? So this is where arguments come into play. So instead of assigning them here, I could assign them in there. So I'd say a comma b comma c. I can add one argument here, that's fine. But in this case, I want three, so I use a comma to separate them, okay? So let me remove this second one. Now, if I try to run this, it's going to say missing argument one, missing argument two, and missing argument three, and identified variable B, A, and C. So in other words, these arguments, arguments are in here. These values here are called arguments. So they are missing when I call the function, because as you can see here, this is empty. So I need to provide these. So I could copy this and paste it there, but then I have to declare these uh, variables. So I might say one, A is equal to one, uh, B is equal to two, and C is equal to three. Uh, let me do this for clarity as well. And this will run just fine. It will give me a six. So how is this working? I'm declaring A, B, and C and then I'm passing them into the function as arguments. So when I'm inside this function, uh, whenever I refer to A, it's referencing this value here, which is that, which is that. So this is just a way to pass in arguments from the outside into the inside. But as usual, if I change the value of A in here, it does not affect this A out here because of scope again, okay? Now, all this time we've been doing an echo on the uh, result of the function. But what if I want a result that I can work with from this function? So this is where this uh, return comes in. There's a, uh, a keyword called return answer. So if I do this, what happens is if I refresh, you won't see this six anymore. Why? Because I'm not echoing it anymore. All I'm doing is returning the answer back here. So how do I catch this answer? I just assign a variable here, I say uh, maybe g is equal to, okay. So what will happen is whatever the return of this function will be assigned to this g. So then I can do what I want with g, I can say echo g in the end, and then I'll get my 6. Or I could add something and say echo g plus 10, for example, and then I get 16, all right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So moving on. Um, this is how you get uh, a return from a function. Okay. Now, sometimes you may have multiple values to return. So a clever way to do that is to return an array instead 
of a single value like this one. So in this case, I could say answer. I put Once I put those, then it means one location of answer will have this, and then I can repeat this and add maybe plus two, like that. So I'll have two memory locations for answer. And so I cannot uh, do this anymore. I would have to print readable like that. We use the print r, print underscore r to show the value of um, an array. So let me refresh this. And you see that it returns an array with location zero containing six, location one containing eight. So it contains eight because we added a two at the end and so on. So this is how you can pass in values into functions and actually return a value that is usable outside the function. Okay, so if you don't understand why we need functions right now, uh, don't worry. You will get it as you do uh, practice on creating websites. It will become very apparent why you need functions in certain instances. So I'll see you in the next video.